Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. In our last video, we looked at the manufacturing process here at Squid Industries, which is how they make all the handles, the blades, and even the pivots. And now, in this video, I think it's time that we take all that knowledge and put it together in assembly. See, it makes a lot of sense here. Come on, let's go say hi to Lucas and see if he can't shed a little light on what's happening in here. Hey, Lucas, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Listen, I'm really swamped today, so you're going to have to come back tomorrow. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. All right, see ya. What's up, guys? It's the next day, and I'm wearing the same clothing. So let's go talk to Lucas, and hopefully he can... Yeah. What's up, Lucas? How's it going? Hey, what's up? Listen, man, I'm so oh sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's go. Oh, thank God. So All right, so what do we got in here, man? This is the assembly area? This is the assembly area, but it's really more than just assembly. Well, we do a lot of stuff in here. Packaging, inspection, assembly, laser engraving, and a lot of our inventory, if not all of it, is here on the floor. So let's go over here and start with the build, um, the build chart, and then we'll take a look and see what the guys are getting started with. Apparently it should say more on the door than just assembly, but what do I know? Nothing. <laughs> All right, so we got some screens here. What's what's all this? <laughs> so this is basically what the guys are going to be focusing on because this is going to be what's available on the next Wednesday's drop. So this is your planning for the upcoming drop. Yep, that's right. What yep. determines what knives you're going to be dropping? Well, it's a variety of things. It's either inventory and or demand. So you're kind of based off of both what people are looking for, but also what you actually have. Yeah, and we're trying to the rotate top. the colors as well so that people have a chance to get their favorite. Yeah, we try to change it up each week so that people have options. Okay, so if I'm coming in here as an employee here and we're we're, we're trying to figure out what to build, is this the first place I'd go? Yep, we that's know? right. Come in here in the morning, take a look at what to build, and then we'll head over here and see the inventory. All right, right. let's look at the inventory. Yep. So right here on this left-hand side, we've got the squiddies. Okay. So we've got the squiddy C, squiddy B, squiddy, squiddy U. Oh, They're wow, yeah. Label. And we've separated them by handles and blades, of course. So this is just parts? Yep, this is just all parts right before it's ready for assembly. So yeah, we've got the squiddies on the left-hand side. All of the other handles with tritons here, Makos, squid trainers, nautilus, and a variety of blemish parts all underneath. Gotcha. So then, what's the next step from here? Where would we, where would we go? So, if we were to build, let's say, triants, I would take the, the handles off, the color I'm building, I'd pick up the blades from down there, and I'd head over to one of the assembly stations. And at the assembly stations, we've got a variety of pins for the pressing of the Zen pins or tank pins, and okay. then they'll get to that assembly. Cool, great. Let's do that. Yeah, let's go. Sweet. Alrighty, so my main man Vinny here is gonna show us how it's done. Okay. So we keep all of our Zen pins and weight pins over here. He's essentially gonna take a look at the finish, make sure they look great. Okay, so, so. he's gonna be putting the pins into the handles here. Yep, the weight pins and the Zen pins are an interference fit, which is an issue term for basically press fit. Oh, okay. Because the pin is slightly bigger than the hole, that friction causes the pin to be permanently placed in there. We'll finish it off by pressing it in with a fiberglass plate just to make sure we don't scratch the surface of the handles there. And we have this plate in the middle just to make sure that the channel doesn't cave in during the pressing process. Oh, that's a good point. How much pressure are you applying here? So these are one ton arbor presses. So oh. we're not we're not applying the full one tons, but I, I would probably guess it's at least several hundred pounds of force. Yeah, I see. so those are in there really tight. They're in there really tight, <laughs> yeah. The first step is always doing the pressing because oh, when they're fully assembled, it's kind of clunky and cumbersome to put the pins in because you got to balance up here on the stage of the arbor press. So you want to do the pins first. Yeah, so when, the, when the handles are separated. Right. Yeah, that's right. So if we're going to go from here, I guess, is the blade next? Yep, so we're going to go grab the blade and we're going to put it together with some hardware. I, I just so happen to have a blade. What'd you get right that? Here. That's not important. All right. Make Perfect. me a knife. Trainer. Trainer. Same concept, different uh, entire thing. Yep. <laughs> so, so what's the step to put put the blade on? Oh, you already? Whoa, 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 whoa! I just I just put that down and it's already between the handles. 
Vinny There's works some fast. skill here. I'm, That's right, yeah. I'm impressed, okay. So we've got the hardware stored right here. Sure. And we're gonna grab almost every product's gonna have washers, screws, and pivots. Yep. We'll put the blade in first without any of the hardware and they'll line it up. Yeah. And then we'll put in the washers top and bottom. Dude, you are so then, fast with this, oh my God. Yeah, a lot of people struggle to get the washers lined up with the holes and then pushing the pivot through. Yeah, I, I do when I try to put yeah. together my knives. Like it's always but, a struggle uh, to get the thing. You, you, and you've just... <laughs> yep. It takes me like five minutes to put together yeah. any one of my knives after I take yep. it apart and clean everything. And you're you're already complete here. So I he's doing the Loctite right now. Oh so we do a Loctite 262. It's a low strength thread. Yeah. And we do this only at the factory. We don't have it sold in our maintenance kit. And the reason why is because we want like right from our shelves to last as long as possible without tuning. Yeah. So it's, I know a lot of people think that red is like permanent. They're never going to get out, but we only use a very small amount and it's a low strength. So you should be able to take it out. No problem. So it's just there to kind of like make sure that the factory tune lasts as, as long, long as possible. possible. That's right. Oh my God, you're already about So he just did the lubrication in, and so he's going straight to the screws. Dude, I love, I put down the blade and it was just like immediately between the handles and the So one thing that, you, a technique that you might have want to catch there, but for a lot of new guys out there who are trying to tune, to make sure that the pivots don't spin when you're turning the torque driver, you basically want to squeeze the handles together. That applies pressure. Yeah. And so that way the pivot doesn't spin when you're. When you're so you're, you're the just kind of crushing the handles together. Yeah. As you don't, you have, to, you don't have to squeeze it too tightly. Sure, but um, just enough. Just to... enough to get it to, from freely spinning. Yep. In this tuning process here, it's a washer system. And no, there's no bushing. So right now, what it'll do is it'll basically tighten it as much as he can. He'll swing it back and forth and, and then basically feel it. Once it feels good to him, he'll put in the other screw and he'll do the same thing with the other hand. And it's just trying to find that balance of yeah. tightness. It's that perfect sweet spot where mm -hmm. it's as tight as possible so we have the least amount of play, but also the best smoothness. Yeah, so it's, it's a, still it's smooth a, swing and good like action, right. but no play if possible. Right. It's really tough because the amount that you have to turn the screwdriver to get to that perfect location, mm -hmm. it requires skill. So this is done now? Yeah, done. That was so little time. <laughs> you basically handed me this back in the amount of time it took me to take the blade out of my pocket in the first place. Yeah, check the uh, oh check the tap God. and the... Uh... Like, wait, yeah, I'm gonna put this, I have my microphones right here, watch. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing. And this is just washers, right? There's no... Yeah. Oh. oh, that sounds fantastic too. This literally was just handles a moment ago. And then we added the weight pins and then we put the blade on. Is this basically a fully assembled and ready to go? It's fully assembled, it's gonna go into final inspection. We'll check the action one last time and then it'll go into packaging and ready for, for shipment. I can't believe how quickly that happened. You are, you are, I, I understand, you know, anybody can become a master of anything with enough practice, but yeah, I am, I yeah. am highly impressed. It's a combination of trained hands like Vinny and also expert machinists out there who are putting the parts together and making yeah, sure I guess that the tolerances, sense. because the better the machining is, and the tighter the fitment is between the parts, then the easier it is for these guys to put it together quickly. Yeah, so everybody's kind of got their hands in each step of the process, That's and every right. single part of the process has to work to get this smooth of a final product, I guess. Yep. Okay, so once you've built the knife, what do we do with it? Well, once they're built, we're gonna take a look at it one last time, then we'll put it into packaging. Package it up, all right. Yep, let's go. Cool. <laughs>
put it into the machine. Okay, this is well, getting really familiar to what we were doing out yeah, there. Yeah, it's kind of like a pallet system, Last just like out there. There's a couple places you're ready for engraving, so we'll, we'll pop them into one of these positions just like that. It'll be located so that in the program that we have saved, it'll just hit that location, and then these will go straight to assembly. So this is how you add the logo onto all of the blades. Yep, that's right. Oh, that and makes then a lot of sense. When we do the custom engraving, the orders get pulled, and then the, the product will be taken out of the box, and it's already fully assembled, and yeah. then we'll just place it here, and then we'll engrave wherever they want. Okay, cool. So then, I guess, basically, would that be like the last step for a knife like that for a custom order? before it goes out? Yep, that's it. That's the very last step. Gotcha. Okay, so I guess this is technically a step before packaging. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right, so let's, like, sorry for distracting you. We can yep. look at the, we can look at the <laughs> cardboard now. All right, so this is a little less exciting than lasers. Uh, so just a little bit, but it's still pretty exciting because okay. our boxes are pretty fresh. They're nice and flat, yep. easy to transport. They'll get folded. So you together. have to fold each one of these by hand. Yep, gotta fold them. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's take our box back and... Uh, let's go pack the switch trainer. Sounds good. So we take it back to Vinny here. Yep, Vinny, you're gonna show us how to box it, right? Yeah, of course. All right, let's take a look. So first, we have our warranty card with all our information inside. And then inside would be our sticker. And before I box each product, we do alcohol wipe each product, then bag it up. Last check. So there's a lot of steps of quality check throughout the process. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely gotten more and more considerable as, as time has gone on. We want to improve our quality. Then just in the bag and then in the box and that's that. Wow. Okay. So that's the entire process of making one of those, huh? That's pretty much it. So steps. everybody yeah. kind of do each step of the process if they need to? <laughs> well, not necessarily, because some of the products require more trained hands than others. Gotcha. Yeah. So there, the there is... and like the other products that are on the lower end are, are easier to assemble. There's less steps, right? Would, I, would products... I be able to assemble a Squiddy? Maybe. Well, cool, dude. Yeah, this is this is super sick. Thank you for showing us, Vinny. I, I, I appreciate yeah. you allowing Thanks, us Vinny. to invade your little space here. No, 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 no worries. <laughs> so once we've got our box, where do we go now? Well, it's gonna go into our inventory room and be put up on the website for the next drop. Great. You wanna go look at the inventory room? Yeah, let's check it out. Cool. All right, what do we got in here? All right, so this is the inventory room. Okay. It's where oh, all the wow. finished products go. This is a lot of stuff. Yeah, so this right here is our weekly drop zone. So we every got Wednesday. And squid trainers and squiddies. Oh my God. Okay. So we've got these nice little 3D printed folders here just to designate the products. And so it's easier for them to see the categories on the shelves. It's quicker for them to grab. I, I expected a lot of products, but this is this is a lot. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there, there's usually a lot more. It's, this is not even like a quarter of it. Do you, do you fill this whole thing up? You, you usually fill the whole thing, this side oh, really? and this side. Where yeah. is everything? <laughs> well, everything's right here on the ground. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so oh we got God. DHL Goodness. there. And then we got from, from here, all the way from here, we got this bin, that bin, all the way up to here. Those two bins on the cart right there, these two bins up here. So oh all these God. orders were from late Tuesday to now, so it's been about a day and a half. Um, <laughs> this is a day and a half of orders? Well, I mean, it's Wednesday's drop, so that's like right. that's where drop most of the products go on one Wednesday. This but. is three layers deep. This looks like it's like maybe two things of this many packages. This is three layers deep of packages. That's yeah. so many. Yeah, so today is an exceptional day for a lot of packages. I say on a typical day, it's around half of this. Sure, but, but like on, I guess, with the Wednesday drop, you're looking at yeah. a relatively large sum of orders. That's right, yeah. Dude. There's a, there's a lot. Yeah, it shocks me every time too, honestly. I guess I, I never thought, because, you know, you in the emails, you know, it'll say like, oh, 20 of this, 20 of that, whatever. You know, like it's, it, at the time, it never hits me how many that actually is. Yeah, when you, when you when you add it up, realizing yeah. like, oh my god! First, you know, every product is all these different parts, and then yeah. every product, when you add all of it up, it's this is a lot. Yeah, and it's not <laughs> not just a weekly drop too. We're, we're taking in squiddy orders each day. Wow! And so this is a combination of those two. Bit of a personal question here, but um, sure, yeah. Would it be possible for me? to make something. Make something? Here. Yeah, sure. What did you want to make? I mean, you said you said the squiddies are pretty easy, right? I think you could probably handle it. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm not I'm, I'm not looking for something advanced. I don't need to be tuning bushings or anything like that, but I yeah. think I could handle a squiddy. Yeah, we could definitely make that happen. Hey, next episode, 
Squiddy? Squiddy. Yeah! Let's do it. Oh my god. Squiddy. Does have to do more work? I thought we were done. Squiddy's nuts. Got him. <laughs> wow! There he goes. <laughs> Very nice. Oh! I did it.